I think we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to community work session number two. Uh, my name is Rob Badstrom there. I'm the facilities project manager for Montgomery County Public Schools. Um, I just want to say happy Veterans Day to all the vets. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, we're going to um, skip to the, to the next uh, slide where I'm going to introduce our uh, MCPS team. Um, not all of them are on the call, but um, these are all the ones that are associated with this project at this time. We have Seth Adams, our director, director two for Division of Capital Planning and Real Estate. Adrian Caramias, Director of Capital Planning. DJ Connolly, our Senior Planner, which is here. Uh, we have Gary Mosesman, uh, is our Director. Seth Ferriano, Ferriano, Team Leader, Business and Operations. Dennis Cross, Facilities Manager. Myself, as the School Facilities Project Manager. We have the... Um, Department of College and Career Readiness uh, Director here, Scott Murphy. And we also have the Career and Post-Secondary Partnership, uh, Genevieve Floyd, which is not here tonight, but she was on our last meeting. <clears throat> Next slide. Yeah. So uh, this summer, there was a, uh, a group of MCPS based um, a design committee that was formed to get us to the point where we're at. It was uh, incorporated principals, assistant principals, school business administrators, teachers, specialists, and staff with various educational backgrounds. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Dirk Jeffrey from Stantec Architects to introduce his team. Okay. Well, thank you, Rob, and good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you all for making the time to join the call tonight, for your interest in the project and for your willingness to offer your feedback about the design of the new Crown High School. My name is Dirk Jeffrey. I'm a senior principal with Stantec Architecture, and I'm joined by my very talented teammates, all of whom are on the call this evening, and some of whom will take a large part of our presentation tonight. I'll begin with Matt Wagesbeck, a fellow principal at Stantec Architecture, and Matt will serve as our senior project manager. Jasmine McDuffie, our senior project architect. Wilfredo Rodriguez, our senior project designer. And Heidi Liu, project designer. Next, please. Our team is also comp uh, comprised of a number of specialty design firms, including building and site engineering consultants, acoustic design consultants, food service design consultants, sustainable design consultants, cost estimating, and many others as well. These are all firms with lots of experience designing school projects throughout Maryland and Montgomery County in particular. Next, please. Montgomery County Public Schools has also selected Keller Construction Management for their expertise in pre-construction and construction phase, phases of the project. So I want to thank Steve and Dave for being on the call tonight. On behalf of the entire design and construction team, we'd also like to take a moment, uh, as Rob has, to, to recognize Veterans Day, to say thank you to any current or former members of our military who may be on the call tonight. We're all very grateful to you for your service to our country. Thank you. Next, please. We'd also like to make a few comments here at the beginning about the virtual webinar format for our community work sessions. To begin, please know that our meeting is being recorded as are all community work sessions for Montgomery County Public Schools. At any point during our meeting tonight, you'll be able to ask questions by using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. If you hover your cursor over the bottom of your screen, you should notice that a black bar appears and in the center of that bar, you'll see three menu icons, chat, raise hand and Q&A. Please take a moment and try that on your device at this time. You'll notice the black bar only remains visible for a few seconds and then it disappears, but you can bring it back simply by hovering your cursor over the bottom of your screen. For the purposes of tonight's meeting, we won't be using the chat or the raise hand functions. 
Only the Q&A icon is needed tonight. At any time throughout the meeting, please use the Q&A tab to ask your question by typing it in the box that will appear on your screen. Your question will only be seen by the host and designated panelists. Rob will monitor the Q&A submitted throughout the meeting, and we've built time into tonight's agenda to address as many of your questions as possible. Any questions that are not answered during the course of this meeting will be answered in writing, and the response is posted to the MCPS project website, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Next, please. As we did last time, we'd like everyone to know who's on the call this evening. And to do that, we have a poll that provides a number of ways for you to identify your affiliation. In a moment, we'll launch the poll and you'll see an image such as the one here on the right pop on your screen. And we ask that you check as many of the boxes that apply to you. And because some participants in tonight's meeting may join later, we'll run the same poll later in the meeting, but please, you only need to answer at one time. So Jasmine, would you please launch poll number one and we'll ask that everyone take a moment to complete the poll and then hit the submit button. Another second, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we can we can go. We'll, we'll come back to this later. But again, to all those who are on the call, thank you so much for participating. As you might imagine, completing the new Crown High School requires an enormous and focused effort by many, many people over a period of many years. And all that work moves forward ultimately to realize a vision for learning here in Montgomery County. And the vision for this project is articulated in the educational specifications. We spoke about the ed specs in our first meeting and we'll touch on them briefly again tonight as the basis for our work together in the project we're designing. In addition to addressing the detailed facility requirements of the ed specs, schools must also be good neighbors in the communities where they're built. So we must also consider the qualitative aspects of creating a high school campus and address the larger concerns about vehicular access and traffic, mitigating potential sources of noise or unwanted views or lighting, and how to create strong pedestrian and other appropriate connections to the community. These are just some of the things that we've been thinking about, and tonight we'll discuss with you in more detail. Next, please, Jasmine. Our agenda for, our, uh, for this evening's work session looks like this. We'll spend a few minutes reviewing some of the content and key points of our first work session in order to refresh your memory and perhaps relay the groundwork for those who may be joining the conversation for the first time this evening. We'll then spend the majority of our time discussing the three design options that were introduced briefly at the end of our last meeting. We'll go into some detail about each, some of the ideas behind them, allow time to discuss each one before concluding as we did last time with the opportunity to answer any other questions that you may have. Next slide, please. Okay, the next several slides, again, just touch on some of the material that we presented at our last meeting. Next slide, please, Jasmine. In terms of the project communications, you're probably already aware that MCPS has created a separate project page on their website for the new Crown High School. You can see the link there at the bottom of this slide. The point of contact from MCPS for the Crown High School project is Mr. Rod Badstidner, and you can see his contact information there on the screen as well. If you have any questions about this project, 
please direct them to Rob. You may wish to refer to this project page to keep up with the schedule for our community work sessions, review the presentations themselves, including the recording, because they are all posted to the project page. Also, any questions asked during the work session that cannot be answered during the work session will be answered in writing and posted here as well. Rob, is there anything to add that we may have missed? I just wanted to say uh, that we did send out uh, postcard mailers to uh, over 3,000 people and uh, Connect Eds went out to 44 different schools. So um, if, if you can just spread the word out uh, if somebody doesn't know about it, please uh, please have them contact our school or just come to this website. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Next slide, please, Jason. This slide summarizes some of the key takeaways from our first meeting. We received a lot of comments about how close the building should be to the community in terms of whether we hug the street or we occupy a more central location on the site. We received a number of questions and comments about the impact of service vehicles uh, right from any of the neighborhood streets. We spoke about strategies that might promote connections with the community and extend the new urbanist design principles of the Crown community onto the school campus. We spoke about a variety of approaches to create an energy efficient building and whether targeting a net zero energy facility, which is one that employs onsite renewable energy sources to offset the energy load of the building and whether something like that might be a part of this project. We received comments about <clears throat> considering a structured parking deck, whether that's above ground or below ground. And to the extent that it's necessary and the budget can support it, then we will certainly look at that. And then we also received a number of comments about how current traffic patterns might change once the high school is completed and, and the need to perform a traffic study, which is being planned. We do appreciate all the feedback that we received at our first meeting. There were lots of good questions and discussions and we look forward to more of the same tonight. Next slide, please, Jasmine. In terms of the overall schedule for the new Crown High School, we are currently in the schematic design phase of the project. It's represented by the SD abbreviation shown in the first black bar. Schematic design is the phase of the project in which multiple initial ideas about the building and site are considered and direction, which is then carried into the design development and construction documents phases, represented by the DD and CD abbreviations shown in the second bar. And after allowing sufficient time for a building permit, beginning construction in the fall of 2023. So just a little bit less than two years from now, so that we can open the school in time for the start of the 2026-2027 school year. Next, please. So all of our work together as part of this community work session process occurs during the schematic design phase. After tonight, we have two more meetings scheduled. And by the end, we hope our work together results in a design concept that we're all proud of and that MCPS and the Board of Education will support. That's our task. Next slide, please. DJ. Yeah, so quick, quick project background. Um, these are currently the five school clusters that are currently going to be impacted by the opening of Crown High School. We wanted to give everybody some, some context of where Crown sits um, and the adjacent high schools around. And if you attend some of these high schools, you probably know that, that uh, most of them are overutilized. So by opening Crown High School, that would um, help our capacity at the adjacent schools. Next slide. Um, so right now, Crown High School is being built for a capacity of right around 2,200 students with a core of 2,700. Uh, the building area is approximately 325,000 square feet. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Scott Murphy, um, who can give us sort of the um, instructional vision for Crown High School. Yes, good evening, everyone. This is Scott Murphy, Director of College and Career Readiness, District-wide programs in MCPS. Um, just to share a high-level vision uh, for this new high school, 
um, is really all about um, developing high schools of the future and transforming high schools as we know it to um, something new and innovative um, and what high school will become in the ne next decade and beyond. Um, we know that uh, career pathways in STEM, in IT, in biosciences, um, not only um, are the high demand jobs of the future, uh, but this particular site also happens to be um, in a hub of this industry in Montgomery County. Uh, so we are envisioning leveraging um, the partnerships that already exist and the industry that exists in Montgomery County to create uh, the highest quality, high demand STEM pathways um, that also partner with industry to create real life opportunities for students. The other unique thing about this site um, is its proximity uh, to Montgomery College and its proximity to the universities at Shady Grove. Um, so the other part of this vision is to leverage those partnerships um, and create opportunities for um, college credits or dual enrollment uh, throughout the fabric of the high school experience. Um, what we know is that the um, high quality high schools of the future uh, combine career pathways as well as opportunities for college credit into a comprehensive program. Um, and that's sort of the baseline vision uh, for this high school uh, to also, uh, again, leverage the post-secondary as well as business partnerships that exist right here in this part of Montgomery County. Thanks, Scott. All right, uh, this is the building space program. So this is a visual representation of the program that uh, will be going to Crown High School. Um, as you can see, there are a bunch of different academic spaces, whether they're standard classrooms, labs, whether they're science labs, uh, we have special needs, uh, special education programs going there, lots of support spaces a full complement of physical education um, spaces, uh, the auditorium forming arts and fine arts spaces, as well as some shared spaces where, um, you know, whether it be dining or the library media center. And then of course, some of our admin spaces, main office, we things like that. You can go to the next slide. So that's sort of your interior building program. Um, the program for the site, some of the amenities would be a stadium, uh, a baseball and softball field, and then hard play courts as well. And you can go to the next slide. Um, we'll continue to talk about these, some of the exterior features. Um, right now we envision approximately 400 to 400, uh, 400 to 450 cars that should be able to fit on the site as well as 35 to 40 buses. Next slide. All right. Good evening, everyone. I wanted, we wanted to just orient you, orient you to the site in terms of the location. Um, this is I-270 to the east. Um, SAG, Sam I Highway is located to the west. And our site is really a bookend of a Crown community that features the downtown crown area but that has um, retail res, uh, mixed use residential, um, as well as a, a residential area that has a single family homes, townhomes, and some multi-story um, residential units. Um, the major thoroughfares that are surrounding our site is Fields Road to the north. Um, on the uh, east side of our site is Omega Drive. And we have Morrison Drive, which um, creates the border between our site and the residential community. Um, one of the major roads that connects our site to the downtown community is Crown Park Avenue, you see here. Um, what we have uh, highlighted in green is a stormwater management feature of the Crown community. That you'll hear a little bit more from Wilfredo earlier, that's uh, one of the characteristics of the community that we like to look for in our, in our design. Next, I'm gonna go through a series of site characteristics just to orient you to the site in more detail. So in terms of the solar orientation, north is um, right up the page. 
and um, this east and west is going side by side. This is a diagram that shows the green area is a forest conservation easement that we are not able to build on. And the areas in purple and pink represent the topography on the site. This is a fairly sloped site. So the high point of the site is near um, Phil's Road and shown in the darker purple. And as you go down towards the southwest, um, you're going down in terms of the topography and everything is sloping down towards the forest conservation area. The forest conservation makes up about five acres of the site. And that leaves about 25 acres of 25 usable acres of site for um, this high school. And that's a fairly small area for all of the um, programmatic requirements we have for the site. Um, and probably one of the smaller campuses for Montgomery County high schools. In terms of those access points, right now we're looking at a major vehicular access point from the uh, intersection of Fields Road in Washingtonian. There's already a traffic signal there. In terms of Omega Drive, there's also a cut in the medium that we're anticipating having a secondary entrance off to the site. In addition to that, um, Crown Park Avenue really dives right into Morrison, which is a bordering street between our site and the community. And here's a closer look at where that green bill is relative to our site as well. When we started to look at how the um, access points from Fields Road and Omega and really the potential pedestrian access ways from the community come together, we realized that it really creates three zones on the site to really study. And so zone A, we feel is one of the more prominent locations on the site, has strong physical I and mean, visible connections to the community and physical connections. Um, and it slopes in multiple directions, primarily from the Northeast to um, the Southwest. Zone B is the most remote from the community. And it's also adjacent to an office park that's located off of Omega Drive, but it also has the highest amount of elevation and slope on the, on the site. And the third zone, Zone C, is the closest to the forest conservation area shown in green. And it also is the flattest part of the site and the lowest point of the site. And so throughout the presentation, we're gonna be referring to these zones um, throughout each of the design options. Where we left off last meeting was briefly introducing you to three design options that we worked very closely with um, Montgomery County Public Schools and their design committee to develop and this is a study of, of looking at where the major site components, the building, the fields, the stadium should be located relative to those zones, relative to how those, the characteristics of those zones. And so you'll see that each option really explores a, a different approach to the buildings and those site amenities. Before we go any further, we want to make sure that we capture any new attendees that were not here at the beginning. And so we're going to launch a second poll. As Dirk mentioned, if you already filled it out the first time, there's no need to fill it out a second time. So we're going to go and launch it really briefly. <clears throat> Jasmine, I just, uh, there was somebody that said they had, uh, filled that out and it said it failed to submit. So I guess they can try again at this time. Okay. <clears throat> Give it one more 30 seconds or so, and then we'll wrap that up. All right, well, thank you for filling out the poll. Open that. 
And these are the results of that second poll. Okay, thanks, Jasmine. So up to now, tonight's presentation has been a review of the information we presented at work session number one. And at this time, we'll turn our attention to the primary focus of tonight's work session, which is a deeper dive into each of the three options. For each option that we'll look at, Wilfredo will begin with a couple of diagrams to help us think about how the site might be understood and developed in a way that is unique to that option before explaining how the building and all the parking and all the bus and parent queuing, the stadium, the other athletic fields, lay themselves out for that particular option. And he'll end his presentation of each, with, of each option with some 3D images and an animation that might help you to better envision the strengths and the weaknesses of each scheme. As you listen, please use the Q&A tab to post any questions that you have to clarify something that Wilfredo may have said or to confirm your understanding of the concept. And we'll take time to answer your specific questions about option one before going on to a discussion of option two and option three. When we've gone through all three options, we'll open it up to general questions and answers. And before we end the meeting, we'll launch one more poll intended to gauge whether you feel that one or more of the options are on the right path in terms of reflecting the concerns that matter most to you. Next, please. Please know that the three options that you see tonight are still very, very preliminary. They grew out of a iterative and interactive process over the summer with MCPS representatives. That's the design committee that Rob introduced earlier, which included high school administrators and instructional specialists. And by leveraging all that expertise about instruction and the safe operation of a high school campus, we were able to develop these three options that we'll discuss tonight. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, but we felt that they had progressed far enough that we needed to share them with you before going any further. Next, please. Option one. Wilfredo, can you take it from here, please? Thanks, Derek. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, so we're going back to the zone, plant zone diagram. You're already familiar with the zones A, B, and C. So I'm just going to summarize that essentially we think it's very, it was very uh, important for us to create that differentiation and from Fields Road, just extending a line, also using um, what we're calling the green belt from Morrison, also extending a line into our side and using the break in the medium from Omega Drive and kind of like uh, all of these things meet in the center and create these three zones that I think are very important for us. I wanna um, emphasize that north again is up and the sun path is below that yellow curve and represent the sun. For us, it's very important because it helps us orient the building. So next, we wanna show uh, this axonometric diagram and the idea is to show the complexity of the site. We need to sculpt this site because like Jasmine said, when you come from Field Road, it's, you're at a high point, and then when you're going all the way to the um, forest conservation area, it's a very low point. So you're mediating over 30 feet of grade. So in this scheme, we actually created conceptually three tiers. So from Fields Road on the north, you enter high. That's our tier one. That's your main entry and drop off. The tier number two includes the fields, which is baseball and softball, and where your bus entry is. And the final here, which is the lowest, tier three is where the stadium is. So again, this is a conceptual diagram to show you the complexity of how three-dimensional the, the topography is in the site. Next. So we use strategically the building. You can see that the building in this scheme is roughly in the center and it helps, it creates all these amenities around it, but it also helps with, as a retaining wall, mediating between tier one and tier two. So we go back to the diagram and you, we place the building actually in the center. So you look at this L-shaped building with the longer uh, L. It's actually oriented east-west, which is the ideal uh, 
solar orientation from a solar heat gain and from a glare standpoint. So that will be the tallest and longest part of the building. So you can see how having the building in the center allows you to put all of the other side elements around the building and strategically continuing the green belt. You can see how the building is north of that green belt. So it allows you to create a very a meaningful pedestrian connection that could end right at the building. Next. So placing the main side elements, you can see how on the north, that's where the baseball field go, will go. Then the softball field be right below it. And at the lowest part, remember that this is the lowest tier. It will be the stadium, right? Um, area C. And you can see how right in between the building and the stadium, the green veil and that meaningful connection that we're creating, it could be this great uh, pedestrian moment that ends and it's right in between the, the building and the stadium. Next. Finally, you're looking at the whole um, side diagram. So from here, you can see how the blue arrow on the north, that's your main entry. The dotted red line represents the loop, what the cars will do to come in and out. You can see how the building being in the center allows to, for a nice area for queuing. The asterisk represents the main area or drop off. That's where your main admin will be and you will enter that way. Remember that the tiers of the building, you will enter high, the bus drop off from Omega and the service from that side, they will be combined and you enter at a lower level. And again, to emphasize that extension of the green belt, we created a plaza. So this is a, mostly a pedestrian plaza that makes its way all the way to the center and the heart of the site which would be a plaza that could be an amenity for the building, but also an amenity at a free function for the stadium. Parking is on the top Northeast. That's the main parking. And once we go into the floor plan, we will tell you strategies that we're using. So yeah, pedestrian strategy, like we mentioned, the main uh, spaces are on the ground level are auditorium and gym, and you can see how they're at different ends of the L. We're actually creating this portal between the buildings. So it's literally an open connection. So if you park on the Northeast, which is the top right, you can actually, let's say that there's a stadium or an event, you can actually go through the building and make your way easier, right? Just because you have that um, parking on that side, you just try to make ways for the pedestrian to cut through the building. So you can see how the building essentially and the side creates this um, green buffer using baseball, softball at the stadium, kind of like a park before the building. And also placing the courts at the edge of Morrison, close uh, to Crown. Also, it helps enhance that idea of a park before the building. Next. So we are gonna go around the building clockwise. This is just showing you four different corners, emphasizing different aspects of that corner. Uh, like um, Jasmine mentioned, the build, there's only 24 acres. So it's on the smaller end of a site for, for a high school. So this building is going to be around five stories high. It's not your, your typical two-story building. So you can see the massive relationship between the, the residential uh, houses and the building. From Fields Road, you can see how this dotted line right of the drop-off, it receives you and that else welcomes you and takes you right to the main entry. You can see a hint of that um, portal that we're calling that you can actually go through the building. Parking, the main parking is on this side, right on the north, and the bus drop-off coming from a lower level with service at a lower level, so it's hidden and shielded from the, from the neighborhood. Next. Again, this is a view from Southeast. We're right at Omega, looking from Omega, to the building. So clearly you can see bus drop off and service on this side. So buses will come in and you can actually drop off on, on the back of the building or you can actually drop off at the plaza, right? And everybody can come in through the building. Stadium is at the lower tier. So the building is one level below the building, right? So the plaza, when you come in, you're high looking down into the stadium. Next. So now you're looking actually from the neighborhood to the building. 
So the same relationship of the plaza, which is this nice uh, in-between space that all the public amenities, such as the gymnasium, auxiliary gymnasium, spill right into that plaza. And you can actually see the stadium right below it. Next. So from this edge, this is Fields Road, intersection uh, with Morrison. So you can see the neighborhood on the right. You will have a baseball in that, baseball field in this intersection. As you go down uh, south on Morrison, then you will have a softball field, then you will have courts. So you can clearly see this edge. And this is just diagrammatic, right? We will have more planting. These trees do not necessarily represent the amount of trees that we're actually going to have. Next. So this is a ground level view. You can see the key plan is from the actual stadium. This is to show you an idea of um, scale. You can see how the building is, yeah, it's around five stories. Right now we're one level below the building, bleachers. The plaza is right, right above those bleachers. You can see that connection of landscape and this very active space that the gymnasium spill right into it. Next. So we wanna show you this animation just so you have an idea how you approach from eye level and you can actually see the, the plaza, the way that we're thinking, that the linear nature of it. So again, the, the stadium is on the south. You can see the courts closer to Morrison and then we're making our way into eye level. So this is right at the green bell connector. So you can come in, the building is slightly higher. You can see how there's different activities. You can imagine this in a game, game night or an event day. So the building is to the left and finally the stadium is to the right. And you're also seeing beyond the forest conservation area. Thank you, Alfredo. So we, before we go to question and answer, we wanted to summarize a few characteristics of this option. Um, as Alfredo mentioned, building is centrally located on the site. Um, we feel like the, the prominent accessible locations of the gym and the auditorium, the access to the parent drop-off and teacher student parking, and this is the access to the bus loop, and service and delivery off of Omega. The stadium complex is located at the lowest portion of the site near the forest conservation easement. The baseball and softball fields, as Fredo mentions, form this green buffer along Morrison Drive. The courts are located adjacent to Morrison Drive. And the parking lots are near the school, but they're somewhat remote from the stadium. And we're trying to create um, strong pedestrian connections to the community. And on this option, that really is, a, is enhanced with the connection to the green belt. And so before we um, move forward, we wanted to see if you had any questions or thoughts about this option. So we uh, do have took about eight questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the question and then I'll hand it off uh, to whoever may need to answer it. So first one's from Justin, will the wellness center be placed, will, will a wellness center be placed in Crown High School? So what would it look like if not, why not? And how can we advocate for a wellness center to be added? Students at all schools should have access to services that other schools have at MCPS such as mental health therapist and on-site nurse practitioner. DJ, can you uh, answer that for us? Actually, I'll answer it. Um, this is Adrian Karamijas. I'm the director of capital planning. Um, so the decision of whether to uh, put a wellness center at a high school, school-based health center, even linkages to learning, any of those partnerships that we have with the county, with the um, uh, Department of Health and Human Services is it ultimately a decision of the Department of Health and Human Services. We collaborate with them. We let them know what projects we have on the horizon, but ultimately they have a set of priorities and criteria to determine where they're going to place uh, those types of services. So 
If you're interested in advocating, it would be at the county level um, because they are the ones who ultimately would make that decision. All right, thank you, Adrian. Um, question two from Jennifer. Um, We'll resolve the uh, the uh, the issue with the the poll she was taking. Um, so we we have sent out the uh, information to uh, Rich Montgomery. So um, I just checked that on the email. I'll I'll, I'll reach out to Miss Dini and make sure she's getting it out to her community. <clears throat> All right, uh, Justin also said, with all the programs, with all programs, will all programs be available at Crown High School, nursing, auto, internship, TV studio? Scott, can you answer that? Yeah, this is Scott Murphy, Director of College and Career Readiness, MCPS. Uh, yeah, no, not all of those programs are housed in every high school. Uh, some programs that were mentioned there, like the internship program, uh, computer science, engineering, um, those programs generally are in every high school. Other high schools, uh, other programs really require a, a specialty facility area and oftentimes don't have the enrollment to be in every high school. That would be an example like the automotive program that basically has an auto shop in the school as we have at say Seneca Valley High School or Damascus High School. Those are not offered everywhere. Uh, the automotive program would not be envisioned for Crown. Uh, the question about nursing is a good one. As I mentioned earlier, this is envisioned to be um, really focused in on pathways in STEM, such as the health professions and biomedical sciences. So something like nursing or the healthcare professions would be a good bet for this school, but uh, not all programs are located in every building. So he, he also mentioned TV studio. Is that something that all the high schools do receive or? Scott, can you answer that one? Yeah, generally, yes, there is a TV or media production uh, generally in every high school. Okay, thank you. Next question, uh, will this also be a world language high school? Scott, can you answer that one? Yeah, so languages will be offered in this school from introductory languages all the way, level one, all the way up to college level languages. We don't know yet which languages those will be, but yes, there will be all levels of languages offered. Um, but this would not be a, a language high school as some may see them across the country uh, where there may be um, two languages used routinely in the course of regular academic instruction across the board. That is not what's being envisioned here, but uh, robust languages at all levels will be offered for students to select from. All right, thank you. So uh, Justin asked, how many stories will the school be? Will the garage be underground or above? So uh, we are uh, looking at somewhere between four or five stories, depending on uh, which which option and uh, you know where the location is because of the grade. And as far as the garage, we uh, we need to look at that for several things. But um, one of them obviously is budget. The other item is uh, security and um, just someone watching over that area. Um, so we we haven't experienced one yet in, in the high school. So it's some some things we have to talk through before we could even get to that point. Jennifer, um, she said, I wanted to ask about access to the school for buses and students driving uh, and student drop off. I would recommend a separate access point for buses and student parking and student drop off and even a separate flow. Richard Montgomery, because most of the buses and parents dropping off students are coming from the same direction. There's a long queue in the morning and it results in parents, administra administration students trying to get around and around it by engaging in accident which are not safe dropping off in the middle of the street so uh, we do have uh we will at every option have two separate entrances for the school bus and the student drop off on this plan and we'll look at the queuing lines uh, with our traffic study 
and that will help us determine uh, the best location for that queue. Uh, we'll do the best we can. Uh, we, you know, we don't know how many students or parents will be dropping off at this time, but um, we have a uh, standard number in our traffic study that we look at and we'll, we'll review that study with uh, the county. Um, she also asked, uh, I think having the parking far away from the stadium could be problematic, especially for late night football games or other athletic games for safety reasons and for security. They like to get everyone out of the area as quickly as possible. That's something we're looking at. Uh, we'll keep that uh, comment in mind. Thank you. Have uh, another one. I do like the pedestrian walkway and connection to the community. Does MCPA anticipate that Crown will have an open lunch to the students? I guess that's MCPS will have an open lunch to the students or they leave the campus and go into the community for lunch. Uh, that it will be determined later. Um, some high schools do have an open lunch. I'm not sure what this one would uh, would have. I don't know if if there's a DJ or Adrian, is there a, um, I don't know who makes that final decision once the school opens. So it's a decision of the school. A lot of times the school administration, there have been in the past, there were probably more schools that had open lunch and then it turned a little bit around and more schools weren't having open lunches for various reasons, safety of kids, kids leaving campus, um, but as you said, it, it's a decision that will be much later on, you know, sometime before the school opens. Not really part of this, of this process. Yeah, thank you. Here's a question. Uh, can you share the path that would be taken from the parking lot to the stadium um, for being like during use during games? So I, can you show that, Jasmine, um, on the drawing over there there's actually a um a, i don't know if is a is a is a pathway uh through the building as, as Rafredo mentioned so if you park here you'd walk on the entry plaza and now some steps to the plaza for the stadium yeah there's there would also be some additional parking in the uh, bus loop um so it'd be more for staff probably and uh, the visiting teams, but that would alleviate some of the uh, other parking up on top. Robert, are you okay if we move to the next option and just- Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, we're gonna, before we move on to the next option, we, we do wanna get your, your feedback on these options. Um, in terms of a poll. So the first poll we're gonna launch is going to ask you which of these following features, and these are the features that I mentioned earlier in the summary, do you feel contribute to a more successful design option? You can check all that apply. The second question is gonna ask you which of those features feel contribute to a less successful design concept. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch those. Again, Poll one will come up first, and then we'll do poll two.
maybe a few more seconds and then we're gonna end this poll and start the next one. And next, I'm going to launch poll two, which is going to, again, ask you which of the, the same features do you feel contribute to a less successful design concept? We'll give it maybe 10 more seconds. Thank you very much. I'm gonna share those results and we'll move on to the next option. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, Wilfredo. Yep, so we're going back to the, we're starting with the plan diagram again. So option two is actually divided in four tiers. Like option one, you enter on, on the north from Fields Road and the bus um, entry is from Omega Drive, but you tear down four times. The first tier is the entry and the softball. Second tier is where the main drop-off and entry happens. Tier number three is where the bus drop-off occurs. And finally, very similar to option one, that's where the stadium at Sun C occurs. Next. So with the same strategy, we're using the building and this building is more like double bars connected by a spine. It also helps mediate from tier two to tier three. It works as a retaining wall and also as a face to the community. Next. So the building in this case is also located in the center, like in option one, but it's actually closer to Morrison. It's closer to the West. So we're actually anchoring Remember the building is a two bar idea. So the green belt is kind of like the culmination of the green belt. So that secondary entry happens there. And there is also a plaza that mediates between Morrison and the building. With the building located closer to Morrison, there's space to actually place the fields. So softball and baseball go on the north adjacent to Fields Road and the stadium actually all the way to the south, similar to option one, but actually closer to Omega. So looking at the whole site plan diagram, the main entry is exactly in the same place as um, option one, but you meander around softball and you actually probably have the longest queuing line in this one. Main entry is in that central corner, the actual main parking is very similar location, except that it actually extends all the way to the center of the site. Bus drop-off is from Omega. 
and it takes you to a very similar end result. Everybody can enter at the same area. One enters low and other enters high. Similar idea of tier one and tier two and tier three, stadium being the lowest tier of them. So on the other side, you actually have the courts north of the building adjacent to Morrison. So all the courts are clustered between the baseball and the building. And service is actually adjacent to Morrison on, uh, on access to Crown Park. And the idea of this service, remember that it's very similar to services that already happen in the actual neighborhood. So the nature of the, the trucks and the recycling trucks are the same size as everything that happens already in your neighborhood. So zooming in into the floor plan, you can actually see where the main entry is, where the main office is. So that's the main entry. If you come lower at a lower level for, from the bus drop, you actually come on the same side. You can see the proximity of the parking here is closer to the stadium. You still have to go one tier down, but it's a lot closer being in the center of the site. The two bar scheme allows you to have an auditorium on the top bar, which is adjacent to what we're calling a smaller plaza that is in between Morrison and the building. On the other bar is where the gym and auxiliary gym at a lower level, right adjacent to the stadium. And then actually dining happen in that corner. That's one of the reasons because dining, kitchen, all of that stuff will be on that side. That's where we're having service there. Next. So going around the building, massing wise, Again, this is, you're looking at the taller, the taller bar, so it's five stories. You can see how entering from field, this is around the softball. You can see how long um, a space you have for queuing in this, in this option. Parking all the way to the north, but it extends all the way to the center, and you see the stadium beyond. Next. As you turn and looking from Omega again, bus entry similar to option one, but the bus is separated from service, right? Service is on the west side, bus drop-off is on the east side. Stadium also has a plaza, linear plaza, but this one is a little bit more private. It's bounded by the building and by that spine connecting the two, the two bars. Next. So from this side, this is looking from the neighborhood. You can see that connection of the green belt ending at the spine of the building. So the building receives you at the end of this long uh, green belt connector, having a plaza there the, where the auditorium is. So the idea is that you could actually have an auditorium that opens up to the plaza. You can have events for the community and also for the school. Next. So again, looking at Fields Road and Morrison, you can see the edge here is slightly different. Baseball is probably very similar from option one. It's in this corner, but then you have the courts along Morrison. Then you have the building with a plaza welcome you. Then you have another little green space, so amenity to the community, and finally the stadium. Next. So this is an eye level view. You can see the key plan on the top right. It's looking actually from the green belt to the school. So you can see the combination of the green. It ends up in this nice uh, um, Spine, you can see how the tall part of the building is on the left and then the lower, more public amenities on the right side. Next. So this animation we wanna show you from this corner of Morrison and Fields. How do we make our way into the green belt? So you can have and see the, the idea of this massing taller on the left and lower on the right and spine welcomes you at the end, plaza on the left with the courts also on that side. Finally, we spin around. You see the loading, although it's there, it's shielded. There's a green buffer between it, so you wouldn't see it. And then the stadium on the south. And just to summarize the few of these features for option two, as Alfredo mentioned, the building is central to the site, but much closer to Morrison Drive than option one. The location of the auditorium and gymnasium. 
the access for drop off is off of Fields Road. The bus loop drop off is off of Omega. And the service access is off of Crown Park Avenue and Morrison Street. The stadium, as in option one, is located at the lowest point of the site. And baseball and softball are located along Fields Road. Um, and there, there are portions of this parking that are somewhat remote to the stadium. As Will Fravel mentioned, there is a, a pathway, a pedestrian pathway from the parking uh, to the stadium plaza. And with this scheme, similar to option one, we are looking at the Greenbelt as using that as an opportunity to create strong pedestrian connections to the, to the community. So we have right. a few, maybe a few minutes for questions. Yep. Um, so I'll just pick up where I left off. <clears throat> it says, uh, how is the, the green linear park drainage continued? like the option one or like the option. So I don't know, uh, Jasmine or Dirk, can you uh, answer that? I think in option one, the, the green belt really, that, that green belt transitions into a plaza. And I think after further development, that plaza may start to um, have a little more greenery shown. But at the moment, we're really looking at that connection between the green belt and the plaza. And that's similar to option two um, is looking at ways of bringing some of that stormwater management into the site and using that as an, as an opportunity for organizing that along with pedestrian pathways. Okay, thank you. Um, so in response to my question and answer, uh, as the county allocated a wellness center for Crown so that uh, the county has not allocated a wellness center for Crown. Um, let's see here. Is there any option that does not have the school at five floors? That is a lot of ground to cover for students that have a class on the first floor at one end of the building and have to get to the fifth floor at the other end of the building uh, in five to six minutes. So we, we look at that. We consider uh, that during their, um, their scheduling and um, if there's needed, they'll, they'll uh, extend some of the time in between. But uh, for the most part, you'll see uh, some of the uh, community spaces that are on the lower levels that aren't used for classes on a daily basis. Um, so there, there's not as much transition. Um, and we like we just finished Seneca Valley High School and it's similar and uh, there's not any issues at this time. So. That's a good question. Oh. Will this high school be a part of the consortium or will redistricting redistrict, district be uh, re occur? So DJ, did you want to answer that real quick or? So, so I'll answer that. Um, um, so at this point, the only thing that has occurred is that um, Five schools have been identified to relieve the overutilization to for the new Crown High School to relieve their overutilization. How the school will be populated and whether that will be just a traditional uh, reassignment or some other method um, has not been determined yet. Boundary study probably will not take place um, till about two years before. Um, the school opens. Typically, it's about a year or, or 18 months before school opens. In this case, because it's such a large uh, area we're talking about, it'll probably definitely be about two years. So um, the Board of Ed Education is the one who approves the scope of the boundary study. So until that's done, we will not know, um, you know, how, how this will, how the school will be populated. All right, thank you. Um, let's see here. Uh, this thing's jumping around to me. With the different uh, elevation use of steps, particularly through the building to get to the stadium, how are they? How are you accounting for people with mobility issues and those who use wheelchairs? We will have a uh, switchback ramp, and there all area, all fields are uh, will be handicap accessible. 
you may have just uh, it's not probably shown uh, exactly on there right now, but you will have handicap access to all areas. Uh, let me grab one more question. All right. Um, how many access points are there from one school building to another? Students don't have to, to go outside from one building to another, do they? So no, there's, uh, there's no uh, separation between the two. They can link. Uh, and I don't know if Jasmine or Dirk, you want to say anything about that, but some of the openings we have are just, they're bridged over and there's, I'm sure there's going to be uh, stairs in those locations that get people over that into the uh, upper floors. That's correct. We're not proposing that anyone go outside to, to go from one part of the building to the other. Let's just answer uh, one more here. It says the design of the building shape impact how many windows it has or how much natural light it'll, it will be in the classrooms. Dirk or Jasmine? Sure. Well, both of the schemes orient, as Wilfredo mentioned, orient the long axis east-west, which maximizes daylighting, uh, long elevation as uh, both south facing and north facing which allows us to maximize uh, daylighting through and control glare on the south side and, and bring all that light in on the north. So uh, we see no reason why every, every instructional space would not have uh, a great deal of daylighting in this school. So, so uh, thank you for the question. All right, let's uh, continue on. We'll get back to these others when we're done here. Okay. So similar to option one, we're going to launch two polls. Um, same question. We're going to ask the features that I summarized um, a few slides back. And, and how and the first one is, you know, how do you feel those features of option two contribute to a more successful design? And then option poll two will ask you about those same features and, and how you feel they contribute to a less successful design concept. Give me 20 more seconds. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. And now I'm going to launch poll two, which again asks you to identify um, which of these options, which of these characteristics contribute to a less successful design concept. So in the interest of time, we'll in the poll at, in about 30 seconds. Five more seconds. Okay. 
I'm going to end the poll. Thank you for your feedback. We'll move on to the next option. Okay, so option three, we start again with the zoning diagram. So we're looking again also three tiers, except the main difference is the building is actually very close to the intersection of Morrison Drive and Fields Road. So it's all the way on the top left corner. And actually the on the lower side on tier three, you actually have baseball and softball. And on area B where tier two is, is where you have stadium. So in this option, the stadium is the farther away from the neighborhood is a, a parallel with Omega. Road. Next. You can see how the building occupies that corner. It has a more urban presence and it's the closest to field road of all the schemes. Next. So the building occupies that corner right in the intersection of uh, Morrison Drive and Fields Road closer to the north, but it's also anchored by Vermeer and what we're doing is using Vermeer Avenue and creating an access and actually creating what we're calling a gateway. So you can actually also, similar to uh, option one, but at a larger scale, you can go through the building, culminating into the stadium. Next. So in this case, the stadium will be in area B, parallel to Omega Drive, and it will be the farthest away from the, from the neighborhood then baseball and softball all the way closer to the forest conservation area on the lower part of the site. So looking at the whole site diagram, again, very similar to all the scheme, you're coming in high, Fields Road, this is where your drop off and main entry is. You loop around, there's also parking here high, it's not only drop off, but there's also parking. Pedestrians can come from Vermeer Avenue, and bus drop-off, staff parking, and service are accessed from Omega Drive. And then finally, baseball and softball again, all the way down next to the forest conservation area. So zooming in into the actual floor plan, placing the auditorium could actually go closer to Fields Road in that corner. Uh, maybe all the music complex will go on that side, but you can see how the gateway that we're calling the gateway is just a terrace space open, but also cover above that it allows you to come in from the neighborhood and come all the way up. We're actually also including a pedestrian plaza that will take you from all the way from Fields Road, adjacent to the stadium and to the baseball fields too, right? So it's something that happened north and to south. We could also have a smaller uh, pedestrian connection using the, the green belt also and take you, taking you to the field, right? So it creates a pedestrian network that goes from east-west, but also north-south. The service here is from Omega and it's on the south of the building. Next. So again, going around the building, you can see how this is more like a U-shape. So one bar is higher, the other one is lower. The lower bar is where the auditorium is. The taller bar is where a gymnasium and auxiliary gymnasium are on the lower level, right? More public. And then core academy will be above. You can see a little bit of a hint of the gateway from Vermeer, so that opening coming up, connecting to the stadium. And you can see the linear plaza going north-south, connecting you from the stadium all the way to the field. Next. So the stadium is all the way parallel to Omega Drive, again, furthest from the neighborhood. And you can see how the drop-off, similar to all the scheme, you come up, up right? Main entry is where the asterisk is. Also, both drop-off at the same area on the other side of the building low. Also having service on the south side of the building and staff parking. In this case, also the courts are south of the stadium, closer to Omega Drive. Next. So you, you can start seeing that alignment from Vermeer Avenue into the gateway. The tall part of the building is on the south, services on the south as well. You can see, although the building is close to Morrison, there is a good uh, plaza and buffer 
that receives you. So there's a nice edge that shields you from parking and, and more sensors. Next. So intersection of field Road and Morrison, you can see the, the connection of the gateway, but you can see how a building is creating a corner, is continuing that urban wall of all the residential. And then you can see how the edge here is, then you have building, smaller plaza that, that takes you to the gateway. And then there is a buffer area that ends on the baseball field. So very different edge in all of the schemes. Next. This is a view from Morrison to the gateway. Essentially what we're calling the gateway is a covered outdoor area that is terrace. That it will let pedestrians can come and move up. And again, all of these will also have ramps. This is just a diagram. The ADA access all the way up, the same way that's, um, as any pedestrians. To the right, you will have possibly the dining with more core, um, education above it. And at the left, close to field, is where the music complex and auditorium. Next. And this animation is, again, showing coming from the south, from the neighborhood, and going again high level, very similar to the Green Belt. But this is from Vermeer. This building, although it's at the end of Vermeer, it has an opening, right? So there's program above it, but you can actually go through it. So we think that it could create this very energetic space that is pre-function. It's also a space for the students, it's for the community, ends in this smaller courtyard, right at where the entry is, and then finally culminates into the stadium. And then as we turn around, we look back at the gateway and the neighborhood. And just to go over um, some highlights of this option, as Rafredo mentioned, this school is located closer to the, or at the corner of Fields Road and Morrison Drive, which is very different than either of the first two options. Um, the location of the auditorium, again, is off of Fields Road, and the gymnasium is closer to that parking. The parent drop-off is off of uh, Fields Road with student parking and staff parking along with the bus loop and services off of Omega. Uh, the stadium in this one is, is very unique. It's on the, the highest corner of the site in the furthest from the community. And the baseball and softball fields are on the lowest point of the site near the forest conservation easement. And the distributed parking lots on this one make parking close to um, the fields and the stadium. And this one creates, again, strong pedestrian connections to the community, both at Vineyard at Avenue, and also the potential for uh, one along the green belt, as well as the pedestrian pad plaza that runs north south, as Alfredo mentioned. We only have uh, 10 minutes left. And we have a couple of more polls. So I'm wondering if we um, run the poll yeah. and then we circle back the q &A. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So, so similar to the previous two options, um, same, same question, how do you feel the um, attributes of this scheme contribute to a more successful design, poll number one, and then poll number two, how do you feel those same characteristics contribute to a less successful design? Um, we'll keep those polls open for about 45 seconds each. About 15 more seconds. Okay, I'm going to end this poll. 
share those results. Now I'm going to launch the next poll. Again, we'll allow 45 seconds. About 15 seconds. Okay. I'm going to end the poll. Okay. We do have one final poll after Q&A, and I think we have about eight minutes or so. Yeah, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just present a couple questions, then we'll uh, go right into the uh, final uh, survey. <laughs> Anything that we do not get to, we'll post online. Um, so it says, does the parking lot and bus entrance use the same driveway in and out? Uh, on option three, I believe they do, but that parking lot would be designated uh, at, at that lower level for um, like staff would usually park in there. So there's the staff usually gets there before the buses get there. So uh, there's, but this, so the student drop off though is still separated as we always like to do. Um, are there uh, maintenance buildings or sheds on the on the campus? There uh, probably will be a couple small buildings, maybe by the baseball and softball for storage, uh, and uh, some out, outside storage for maintenance equipment. But it, they're not usually very large buildings. We'll show them uh, later in the design. Um, just one more. Someone, uh, option three, it says, are soggy fields a concern if they're located in the lowest part of the site? Uh, we, we provide under drainage, especially if it's a football field, it would have uh, under drainage under the artificial turf. Uh, but um, if we do have damp areas or wet areas, we provide additional drainage to uh, relieve that. Where the, it says, where is the student parking option three? We, uh, the student parking, some of it would probably be up on top um, in that student uh, drop off area. Let's go ahead and continue. Then we'll, we will address these other questions um, later and post them online. Okay. So the last two polls, we want you to think about, um, the first one is please indicate the features you feel would combine to create the most successful design concept for the new Crown High School. Please mark all boxes that apply. And poll number two is gonna ask you to identify which option best addresses the concerns that matter most to you. So I'm gonna launch poll number one. Need some Jeopardy music. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Let me allow another 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to close the poll in about five seconds. And I will start the poll number two. Give me another 10 seconds. Gonna end the poll. Well, thank you for, for participating in the, in the poll. This is really helpful information for us. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up, and I'll answer the other. We'll answer the other questions online. So, so, Jazz, maybe I could just make one final remark here while the slide is up. Yeah, I just wanted to, to thank you for facilitating our discussion tonight, and Wilfredo, nice job. And I want to thank all who shared their, your comments and your questions with us this evening. Your feedback is what makes this process work. It improves the design, and we appreciate all that you've given us to think about and to discuss with MCPS before we meet again. Uh, as you can see on this slide, our next meeting is on December 3rd. It's three weeks from this evening. We are jumping over Thanksgiving, same time in, and in the same format. Uh, until then, uh, again, happy Veterans Day to all, and we hope that you have a great Thanksgiving. Rob? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, reiterate uh, just very thankful for all the comments. There's some additional comments in the uh, Q&A that we'll get to um, that, like you stated, it is very helpful to understand what the community is looking for and uh, really likes and dislikes. So thank you very much. Same uh, happy Veterans Day and uh, wish you all good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.